your Bibles in. Repeating after me in good voice today. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. This book calls me an overcomer. And that's who I am. Today I shall be taught the infallible, unchanging word of God. So my mind is alert. My heart is receptive as I gladly receive the word today. I believe that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you for this day, God. So we come against everything that is not like you in this time against the word. And we declare that we have ears to hear, hearts to receive. And we thank you that it will fall on good ground today. And our lives will be changed. We will be transformed because of the word. And God, we thank you for victory in the word today. And thank you that you're going to increase us in the word today. And we thank you, God, that the word of our mouth and the meditation of our heart will be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord, our strength and our redeemer. And they all said, Amen. Amen. Can you imagine a thing? Lesson three. Can you imagine a thing? Lesson three. Without much introduction, we're just going to go straight in. And we're going to just move to, to, to our first scripture, 2 Corinthians 4, 18. Can you imagine a thing? Lesson three. And out of this lesson comes some, some interesting strategies and tools for how to engage your imagination. Give you some good examples. And it said there, while we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are, are temporary. So the things which are seen are, that means they're not around for a long time. Temporary. But the things which are not seen are eternal. eternal. They're around for a while. They're around a long time. Well, let's start the conversation. How can you look at things which are not seen only by your imagination? That's where you see stuff that's not really here. And you're not having delusions. Imagination is where the conception takes place. If you cannot see it on the inside of you, you won't ever see it on the outside. See, much, much of what's outside was seen on the inside first. Everything you wear, everything you drive, it was inside of somebody first. And so it doesn't work in reverse. It's on the outside, then it goes in. It comes from the inside and go out. So, 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 so controlling and dealing with your inside is important to what shows up on your outside. And if you want a better outside, you got to do a better inside. And some of you want outside stuff without taking care of inside stuff. And it's the inside that determines the outside. And it doesn't always happen all at once. Sometimes it, wait, it takes a while to develop before the outside show up what was inside of you. See, if somebody hateful, they hateful on the inside. Come on, come on, y'all. If they wicked, they wicked on the inside. And they try to play and try to fool everybody and they start oozing out the side. 
And then somebody say, oh, now I see the real you. Why? Because what was on the inside is coming to the outside. And your imagination is inside. Your manifestation is on the outside. So some of the stuff you're getting is because you saw it somewhere in your heart. Oh. You saw it somewhere in your heart. You saw it. And it's manifesting. That's why our thought life is important. What we put into our thought is important. And you have to learn, even if you're in error, how to, how to clean up your thought life so that you can, you can imagine positive things and imagine good stuff so that, that it can manifest on the outside of you. How many want some good stuff on the outside? How many you need it like right now? All right. What can help you replace? The word of God can replace those images that you have received through your eyes. The word of God can help you imagine the right stuff. That's why. How does the word help you? In, in, in the sense that, 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 say for instance, you're, 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 you're looking for a mate. It, it, it won't have you imagine somebody else's mate. Because the filter of the word is there. Amen. Amen. Yeah. All right. All right. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I'm just not releasing you to imagine any old thing you want to. Amen. And act out on that. Amen. All right. Does that make sense? When you can imagine God blessing you, prospering you, healing you, you will glorify God and he will be real and close to you. What you can imagine God doing and then you see him do is going to bring first glory to him. You're going to get a healing, but he's going to get the glory. Amen. Come on. And it's all about him getting the glory. You're going to get delivered for his glory. You're going to come out of poverty for his glory. You're going to get your knees met for his glory because when you get out there, if you got good sense, you're going to say, God did this. God made this way. I didn't even have a way. I just dreamed about it and God made it come to pass. Has God made any of your dreams come to pass? Come on, come on, come on. Go. Because that's what he does. That's how he operates. His desire is to bless you. He's not sitting up thinking 50 ways how to murder you. <laughs> With a lightning bolt in your hand, in his hand. Y'all think that's what God is about. He takes pleasure in blessing you. Because when you get blessed, the world knows that our God is able. And that he's good and that he loves us. Tap somebody say, our God loves us. Look at him again and say, you don't sound sure. I'm sure he loves me. So you got to get, 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 you got to get some stuff out of your head. You keep imagining vain things like the scripture said. Stuff that's unproductive. Stuff that don't happen. And when it show up, you, act, you get surprised and you have the, uh, the shock face. When that's all you've been dreaming about is, is doom and, and destruction Amen. and disaster. Some of y'all can't watch the news because it sets wrong imagination in your heart. You, you're scared to even leave out the door. I don't ride on planes because they're all falling out the air. Not all of them. Just say this, the one that pastor is on, he'll be standing up, but he'll be flying. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Peter knew the importance of remembering what God has done. And so we find in 2 Peter a set of scriptures that, that makes the case for how he wanted to make sure that what God has done is remembered. Second Peter 1 and 12. And it says, for this reason, I will not be negligent. Everybody say negligent. negligent. 
Say, I will not be negligent. To do what? To remind you always of these things. See, when you get blessed, that's your place for your tongue and your mouth to get busy. Amen. To remind everybody and not be negligent. Amen. See, we start walking in the, the blessing and we get all puffed up in that. And we forget and we get negligent to give credit. I need to, to, to make sure that y'all know and get the memo that God did this. Yeah. How many you tell people God did? You, are, are you taking the credit like you was that wonderful? I passed the test. I went to school. Somebody woke you up this morning. Somebody helped you remember. Most of the time. Come on. Are, are y'all out there? We need to get credit where credit is due. Yes. And stop acting like we're all of that. we just part of the plan. Thank you, Jesus, that you made me part of the plan. Yes. And, and, and then it says, it says, it says uh, remind you always of these things. Though you know and are established in the present truth. Is, is, is that 15 or is that the end of 12? Okay, I want to make sure. Because the numbers was hitting a little bit on the side. For, let me read it all again. For this reason, I will not be negligent. Remind you always of these things. What things? What God has done. Yeah. Though you know and are established in the present truth. That means though you are established in the blessing, yeah. don't be negligent. Amen. Amen. You're living in the house. You're riding in the car. Yeah. You're working the job. You got to test that the cancer is gone in your desk. Come on, God. You got to test that the diabetes, you got the diagnosis from the doctor. You don't have it anymore. You are established in that present truth. And that's when Peter said, don't get beside yourself and get negligent. I had a friend that graduated third in our graduating class. Brilliant. Brilliant. Cum laude something. Five years after graduation, I was enrolled at Wayne State. And I looked at and, 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 and you know, Cass Corridor is near Wayne State. And so we catch the bus and we are. And there he was, walking the street, brilliant, mumbling to himself. And I called him by his name. Yeah, 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 what you. He didn't even recognize me. Now I still look the same, but he didn't recognize me. So don't get caught up in this. Because greater ones than you have lost. Are, are y'all out there? 2 Peter 1.15. Here comes Peter again in the same vein. He says, moreover, I will... I will be careful to ensure that you always have a reminder of these things after my decease. Peter was saying, I'm going to document how good God be, has been to me in this life. So it's a reminder to you that after I'm no longer on the scene, you can read about how good God was to Peter. So you need to document and establish and, uh, and publish in your family how good God was to you. So when you're stretched out here, they don't have to do creative writing over you. And try to figure out something to say. Did they do something in their church? Did they serve God? Did they willingly offer up what they had to the kingdom of God? No, they ain't got to create anything. What shall I say about them? 
Peter say, I, you won't have to remember it because I'm going to document it for you. I'm going to write it down so when I'm gone, just pick it up and say, he loved God on Monday. He served him on Tuesday. He was available to him on Wednesday. He laid hands on the sick on Thursday. He gave to the poor on Friday. Where is it? He documented it. So when I am deceased. Oh, y'all don't know what I'm talking about. You keep acting like you're going to be here forever. You ain't going to look the same forever. Uh, keep acting like you don't, you're here forever. You better start publishing it. Write your own obituary. Lay it next to the insurance policy. Have an insurance policy. Or they'll be singing your favorite song. Burn, baby, burn. <laughs> I'm talking truth here today. We can't be negligent. We need to publish what God has done. I know you think that's morbid. I don't want to think about my death. I don't want to think about that. Well, if you want them to say something, right. Are y'all there? Does that make sense? How many of you got some good works that you can remind people that God did for you? Just right quick. God, God, you see. Ooh, glory to God. Glory to God. How, God, it's not when you did it, but how many times have you done it? Come on, come on, come on. How, 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 how many times? And you can't trust that your memory going to always bring it back. Sometimes certain things spark and you say, yeah, God did that. I forgot about that. Anybody out there? Let's hit Peter one more time. Second Peter 3 and 1. It says, Beloved, I now write to you this second epistle, this second letter. In, in both of which, in both letters, I stir up your pure minds by way of reminder. He said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk to your minds again to, to, to remind you of what I said in, in 2 Peter 1 and 12 and 2 Peter 1 and 15, I'm, I'm in this second epistle, again, I'm reminding you of some stuff that I said earlier to. He, this is the second epistle, but he had wrote 1 Peter. And she said, I'm reminding you for all the way back to my first letter to, 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 to remember what God has done. Remember. I'm reminding you to remember. You can stir yourself up through memory. You can hear a certain song and you remember who you were dating at that time. Woo! Oh, Lord. A memory can stir you powerfully. I can remember where I was when the Detroit Tigers won the World Series in 1968. Anybody have a remark or send a text, I'll, I'll hurt you. <laughs> See, I have to stop it. I know there's an there's a underground communication going on. <laughs> oh, you have to watch as well as pray, because if you don't, They'll be sitting up laughing in your face and you think they're laughing with you. <laughs> there was when they won, I wasn't on the ball field, but there was this winning feeling that, that, that covered Detroit. Also remember when the race riot broke out in 67. There was that burning <laughs> feeling. <laughs> And sensation all over the city. Anybody remember? Yes. 
the tanks going. I remember when I had heard that they had raided a blind pig and something broke out on Linwood. I said, Linwood, what's going on over at Linwood? And then next thing I know, I smell smoke. <laughs> I remember. I remember where I was when, 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 when John F. Kennedy got assassinated. Anybody of that, that time frame remember that? They came and got us out of class. I remember it just like it was yesterday. And how sad we were. Same for Martin Luther King. How sad we were as kids. They, they gathered. That's the day when schools cared on a different level. They were concerned about the, the emotions of kids and how they would react and, and stuff. And so, so they were right because those sensing stayed with us. They're in our memory. Come on. Come on. Am I right? In your memory, imagination is cultivated. Pastor is running on. You remember what God has done then. You imagine what else he can do. See, that's why you need to remember because it helps you imagine what he can do next. Conversely, I don't understand why he's done something before and when you face the next barricade, the next situation, you act like you don't have a memory that he brought you through the last time. And you start stressing out as if this is a new deal. You have the same God, you just got a different devil to hit. But if he handled that yesterday, devil... If he handled that yesterday dilemma, yes. what made you thought he think that he went on vacation? Yes. I'm toe up. I just got new. Well, you've been there before. Yes. It's in your head. Amen. Come on. Anybody got some stuff you went through in your head and, and something else showed up? You have to remind yourself, God, you brought me through before. Yes. Get used to saying that, God, you brought me through before. Come on, come on, everybody say it. Let's say it again. See, y'all tongue so lazy that you don't say it. Just say, God, you brought me through before. See, it ain't easy to say because you're not used to saying it. Because when you hit something, you start stressing out and acting like he's not able. Like God hit disability before at that last time he helped you. King David recognized the value of imagination. After David generously con contributed over in those days a billion dollars, David himself, he was that rich, to the future building of the temple from his own personal treasure. And all the Israelites gave several billion. They were really billionaires. David glorified God for blessing them so much that they could give this much freely. They gave. You want something to happen, but you won't give. They took ownership of the temple because they gave. And the leadership gave. Whew. I said a lot of stuff right then and there. He then emphasized the importance that they keep this memory. Where? In their imagination. Remember that the Lord blessed you to give that way. Not that you was mad about giving, but you were glad to give to the glory of God. And people came from all over the ancient world to see the temple that was built. Using pearls for eyes. Gold overlaid. And the gold wasn't, you know, just a little, you know, something shiny laid on top. It was measurable. It was thick. And the carrot they're still trying to prove. And I'm not talking about Bugs Bunny's carrot. I'm talking about 
go get it. I went to the Chicago Museum to see the treasures of Egypt. And Lynn went with me. And you know my sister, she likes Drew. If y'all say a word <laughs> after the day, the life you say may be your own. <laughs> she just does. She always has like, you know, jury. And I took her to the trip with me, and we, we were just the trip, and they had nefertaries and the 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 the, the, the kings, the, the 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 pharaohs, his burial. Mass. And I would walk down, I looked at it and nod, I kept going. And I looked back, and her nose was glued to the glass. <laughs> My nickname is Brighty. You can't use it. Uh, she said, That's real gold in there. I said, Yes, ma'am. It was dark and yellow and thick. It was glorious. And it was inlaid with, with beryl and sapphires and sardonyx, all those stones in the Bible that brilliantly cut and just laid in there. And it was just the burial mass. And then she saw a little throne. It was all gold and, 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 and ebony and all kinds of just It was a play toy. This, 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 this little stuff right here, I think my necklace was hanging out like this. I just did this. <laughs> Hide everything. Child, that ain't nothing. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's how much they gave to the temple. And, 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 and David, he, he had to remind them. And, and here, here, here is his memo to them. I, I'm not going to read all of it, but you can go back and read all of it. First Chronicles 28 and 18 is the key verse. And it says, as for me, in the uprightness of mine heart, and this is from the King James Version, I have willingly offered these things. I have what? Willingly. Come on. You're not giving unless it's willing. I would say keep your mad money, but I need it. You know, uh, uh, I have willingly offered these things. Now have I seen with joy the people which are present here. So I see the fruit of my offering. That this place of worship is just that. It is a place of a worship. And, and, and I see with joy the people which are present here to offer willingly unto thee, O Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, Israel, our Father. Keep this forever in the imagination of the thoughts of the hearts of thy people and prepare their hearts unto thee. Now this is really Solomon. This is Solomon. He had the plans from David, but Solomon built the temple. And, and he said, he said there, he said that, and prepare their hearts, he said, ever in the imagination of the thoughts of the heart. I want it to be such a great imagination that they'll, they'll want to succeed greater than this. They'll want to do better than this. And you can only do better when you got a, a better memory. Does that make sense? Why are people successful is because they have, they remind themselves, I've been a success. That's why when a millionaire loses all of his money, he can get it back faster. Because of what? See, if you've always been broke, All you got is a memory, a broke memory. Our family don't have nothing memory. And that's where you leave your paradigm. That's where your boundaries are. And you can't imagine beyond there. 
you will stay in what you are bound by. Oh, God. Jesus, Jesus also released, oh, God. Faith, feel, imagine, Mark 6, 38 through 44. And it said there, and I'm going to read this all. But he said to them, how many loaves do you have? Go and see. And when they found out, they said, five and two fish. Then he commanded them to make them all sit down in groups on the green grass. Oh, boy, that would preach. If you want to get blessed, get in order. So they sat down in ranks. In hundreds and fifty, not ninety-nine and forty-eight. <laughs> we keep wanting to be forty-eight when you got to be fifty. <laughs> My God. And when he had taken the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to his disciples. Let me stop right there. And gave them to his disciples. Remember, I stopped right there and gave them to his disciples. You might have fishes and loaves. Five loaves and two fishes. Small. It's a boy's lunch. You might have that. But it won't multiply. Until you put it in the hands of Jesus. The disciples didn't break it. They said, Jesus passed this out. Give me this, this bag. They passed it to Jesus. They had 5,000 people to feed. You need to give your meager stuff to the master chef. Yes. Come on now. Yes. That can work a wonder in the kitchen. Yes. <laughs> and you keep just dealing with, that's all I got is five loaves, two fish. And you don't pass it nowhere. When somebody that can make it multiply, yes. you need to be putting it in their hands. So everybody can eat. And you keep holding it. And your one little, your two little fish turn into a fish yet. <laughs> and, and the five laurels turn to two. My little stuff is just dwindling it down. Well, you didn't put it in the hand. And that's what's going to happen to it if you don't put it in the hand of Jesus. Oh, I'm sorry. And he gave them to his disciples and set and, and, and to set before them. And the two fish he divided among them all. So they all, how many ate? They all, all ate and were what? Yeah. It wasn't just a snack. It wasn't a lunchable. Amen. And, 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 and they took up afterward. Full of fragments and, and of the fish. Now those who had eaten the loaves were about 5,000 men. If you add the women and children, the numbers have been estimated close to 20,000 people. If you just keep it, you will only eat. But if you pass it to somebody that can multiply it, there'll be leftovers. I had to drop that in right quick. That's the message in the message. The multitude following Jesus needed to be fair. The apostles couldn't imagine how they could feed so many. But Jesus could imagine those five loaves of bread and two fish because he had a memory. Where was Jesus' memory? In heaven? I seen my daddy do this. 
I see my daddy make something out of nothing. Jesus operated in his imaginative faith and say, put it in my hand because I got a memory of what my daddy did. Oh, no, you don't, you don't understand what I'm saying. In my memory, I know he can make something out of nothing. He can multiply something in the midst of And And he wasn't crazy. When, when, when Jesus got it into say, the Bible said he looked up. Yes. And, and it's a, 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 a Greek word, anaplepo, which means to look again. What Jesus did, he looked again into his memory. So that he was empowered to believe that what it was in his hand wasn't all that was going to be in his hand. That's why you have to publish your blessing. So you have a memory. I've been there before. God's going to bring me out of this too. Tap somebody say he's going to bring me out of this too. Because some of y'all going through it, you're wondering how you're going to make it through. But, 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 but you, you, need to, you need to make sure you got an imaginative memory. I remember how God, he, and, and, and God is so imaginative till he don't do the same thing twice, but he always comes through. And he, he, he shocks you, he surprises you, he blows your mind. It comes out of nowhere. It comes from your enemy. It comes from your friend. It comes from nowhere. When you look around, you just got it. I'd rather that he bless me through my enemies. Yeah. They got more money. <laughs> <laughs> Take what God says about you, who you are, what God has given you, and paint a picture. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead can raise you up. Yeah. You will see yourself succeeding instead of failing. You got to get an image of success on the inside of you. Then you you'll move differently. Well, 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 well. Let me move on. Golly, 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 golly. Ooh. it'll be less than four. I mean. Your imagination is so important. You don't get to to choose whether it functions. Do you understand? It's a matter of choosing whether it blesses you or curses you. What's in you that's cursing you? If it's unproductive, it's cursing you. And you imagined it. It's you. It came out of you. And it's not blessing you. Hebrews 11 and 1, just, just, just run with me here. In, in, in verse 1 it says, faith is defined as evidence of things not seen. Evidence of things not seen. Now if, something, if it's something you can't see, then it has to deal with the realm of the imagination. You can't see it, but you see it. I can't see it, but I see it. I can't see it with this, but I see it. How many of you see it, but you don't see it? It's not in my pocket, but I see it. Ooh. In fact, the dictionary says, imagine means to form a mental image of something not present. Are y'all getting tired? I'll just say blessing. You getting tired? Y'all ready to go home? Anybody need to kick some some wrong imagination out? Come on, okay, okay, all right. All right. What could most closely describe the Bible definition of faith in Hebrews eleven and one? Throughout the eleventh chapter, not only did the first verse talk about creative imagination, all throughout there were witnesses. Let's let's do a rundown. 11 and 6. This is going to be quick. 11 and 6. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a what? Of those who what? 
If you can imagine it, that you'll have it. 11 and 7. By faith, Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen. What? He was warned of what? What, see, what was that that he was warned of? That it was going to rain. It had never rained. But rain was in his imagination. God will warn you of stuff that ain't even happened yet. Oh my God. I never saw that before. But it's in my head. Are you out there? Of things not yet seen. Moved. Everybody say move. move. See because you don't see it. Don't mean you have an excuse not to move. I can't see it. I can't see it. I don't know what he's talking about. I can't see it. So I'm, I'm not going to do nothing. Till, till I'm able to see it. And five years later. I still can't see it. He moved with godly fear, respect. Prepared an ark, a big boat, for the saving of his household by which he, he, he condemned the world and became heir of righteousness, which is according to faith. He moved on what he saw. Even with not seeing it present, he saw it. Because God gave it to him. Next one. Ooh. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place which, which he would receive an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. God just say, hey, get your family, go. Well, some of you won't move. I got to know where I'm going, because people will take you off a cliff. I got to. Many of you, God couldn't tell that to. Where you going, Abraham? To a, to a city whose builder and maker is God. Where is that, God? Where, where is that, God? Give me a phone, somebody. I got the GPS. City whose builder and maker is God. I got to Google that. Where is that? How long does it take to get there? And you want me to take the whole family with me? They got questions too. Where you taking us? Come on, come on, y'all better get ready for this because it's the truth. Where you taking us? These are in the hallmark of faith in Hebrews 11. Let me, let me do number 11 and I'm going to leave you alone. Verse 11. By faith, Sarah herself. See, Abraham got his own special stuff. Then Sarah got hers. Herself. Also, everybody say also. So, so, so Rose also. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, ah, ah, ow, ah, ow, ah, stay with me. Y'all so scared of the word, y'all know to give birth in a minute, won't you? It's a C. I, 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 some people say, don't you dare, don't call my name out. So I ain't going to say nothing about Helene. Yeah. Also. I'm reading the word. Y'all. Just cool it. Cool it. Also receive strength. To conceive. I'm saying also. Because you can receive strength to conceive. What, what you couldn't receive before. Oh. Some blessings that are coming, you need strength to receive. Oh, you think you're ready for it, but you're not ready for it. You need strength to receive it. Because there's work on the other side of the blessing. 
and she bore a child when she was past the age. What age is that? What age you think it is? Because, because this is what she did. She, the also happened because she judged him faithful who had promised her. Sarah couldn't see a baby in her natural. She couldn't see it nowhere else until God told her. And so she started imagining a baby. Who could imagine a thing? I'm up in age. Come on, come on, come on. And I'm saying that to somebody that say, my time in life is over for certain things. But God can walk back your time. He can redeem the time where you were infertile and not producing and cause fertility to happen in your dream. And something you've been imagining, you will give birth to. It's time for you all to get pregnant. Oh, I didn't get a lot of amen. I don't care. Because if you ain't following me in this, you're missing the point. It's time for you to get pregnant. It's time for you to get pregnant. Time for you to get pregnant. Time for you to get pregnant. And even you, big old boy, it's time for you to get pregnant to get a big old belly. Time for you, bald head dude, get pregnant. And you won't have anything unless you conceive. God, it's time to conceive. Conceive, girl. Conceive. You're tired of the way stuff is? It's time to get pregnant. Get a vision for something else and trust God to say, Ooh, there it is. Blessings to you today. You need an image of something greater than you. My God, my God. Stand to your feet and give him a praise all over this room. My God, my God, my God. Throw up them hands and believe God for more than what you got. <laughs> oh God, we thank you and we bless you. And we give you glory. Take somebody by the hand and say, you also. You also. Tell them to receive strength. To give birth to your blessing. Give God a good praise in this house. Shall prosper. 